we make it our God. We pedestal it and we say, I need to get this thing in order to feel good about myself. We make it so big and separate from us. We repel it, we push it away. We want it, we secretly want it, but we also push it away. We push it away because we're scared. We push it away because we don't want to be like one of those evil people that hurt our family. You don't have to make it happen, you have to make it welcome. You make it welcome by clearing energetic space. You clear energetic space by forgiving, by addressing the traumas and the shame and the guilt. So the richer you are, the less you're thinking about trying to pay bills and survive. Peace and blessings. This video is about God and money. My name is Preston Smiles. And for most of my life, I grew up as what you would call a poor person. Uh, nobody in my family are entrepreneurs or anything like that. We come from nothing. And from that foundation, I went on a spiritual journey to create the most abundance that I possibly could. I'm still on that journey right now. I wrote a book called Spiritual Millionaire. You can find the link below if you want it. If you don't, it's all good. But this video, uh, I'm going to be talking about how I understand God and money and why I've been able to put myself in a position where I own seven houses with my wife. Uh, there's three just on this property alone. I got all the fancy cars and uh, cool materials and none of it is my God. None of it will make or break me and it's fun to have. And so I, I've been a poor person and I'm currently a rich person. I was rich in spirit before I was rich uh, physically. And I'm gonna talk about that in a minute. So uh, let's get it, God and money. So let's start with money is a neutral bystander. Money has no inherent power or value or uh, extra juju more than we actually give it. Money is like a, like a shovel. Right? I could dig a hole with my hands, maybe harder, maybe interesting, or I can dig a hole with a shovel. The shovel allows me to do it faster, cleaner, and take, let's call it less energy, which leaves me more space and spaciousness to plant more trees, more flowers, to be human. And so uh, oftentimes when it comes to money, uh, especially spiritual people, we can either do one of two things. We, one, we deify it. We make it our God. We pedestal it. And we say, I need to get this thing in order to feel good about myself. We make it so big and separate from us that it becomes this giant Mount Kilimanjaro that we have to fly across the world to get to and all the things and we could die and all of that stuff. We make it so big. That's one. Two, we make it, we demonize it. We make it uh, those rich people, those greedy people. We look at money as this tool for evil and greed. And we look at all the, the atrocities of the world and we say money is at the root of all of that. And so we repel it, we push it away. We want it, we secretly want it, but we also push it away. We push it away because we're scared. We push it away because we don't want to be like one of those evil people that hurt our family. A little side story for you all. My dad, um, dope dude, uh, I was 15 years old when they took our house. They took our house, I went to school, I came back, the house was boarded up. From that day, for many years, my dad lived on the streets. He lived in garages of people that he knew. He lived in crack motels in LA. And my dad said something to me. Um, he said, I'll never work for the man again. He took an alternative route. He decided that all his hard work ended him in a position where he got laid off from uh, Hughes Aircraft and his wife left him, stepmom. She took all our stuff including my bed and my basketball cards and all that stuff, money, money. Uh, when somebody deifies money, they will steal sometimes to get it. It's a side note. But I say all that to say, my dad repelled money. He wanted it, so he asked me for it all the time. He asked my grandmother for it all the time. He was always borrowing. Hey, can I get $5? Can I get $20? Can I get this, that, and the other? He wanted it, but he also demonized it. He repelled it. He, re he went against 
the idea of it and yet he desired it and some of you maybe you're not as bad or in such a bad place as my father is but I want you to find the lessons in some of this because again you'll understand why I'm the way I am and how I got here again money and God they mix now let's go into that a little bit so God is period meaning omniscient omnipresent omnipotent everywhere all-knowing that's my truth that's my understanding of God God is like electricity it electricity never says no it's everywhere even though we can't see it when we tune into it when we use the right um, wiring we can use it we can harness it so my truth is that God there's no place where God isn't there's no country no border no part of the ocean no part of a uh, particular you know, God is in, in the US but it's not in Mexico God is here but it's not there God is everywhere in my opinion and there's nothing outside of God, period. Everything happens inside of God. And so money is of God. Money is a tool and a, an opportunity inside of God. And the, 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 the richer I am in spirit first, the more available I am to give my gifts. So my truth is, is that the fruit doesn't belong to the tree, it belongs to the ecosystem. Meaning, your gifts, your talents, your abilities, the things that are handwritten on your current soul are not yours, they belong to us. And the richer you are, the more you use in spirit first. We offer the vibration first. The richer we are in spirit. The richer we are in spirit. Okay, what do I mean by that? The richer we are in spirit. Meaning, when you understand what you are placed here for, two two moments two births first birth that's regular life that's you know victim make it happen will it into existence that's regular life the second birth is the one that many of you are in right now that's where you find out that there's more to life than what we've been fed that's when you understand that we've been bamboozled, cleverly bamboozled into the, with using the weapon of mass distraction called social media and media in general to, to believe in lack, limitation, and scarcity. So that second birth is when you, you understand that there's a higher self, a higher calling on your life, and that your job is to give your gifts, period. When we tune into that second, that second birth and we start to direct our gifts, when we start to move in clear space, many of you right now, you, you, you have a list of people and scenarios that you have not forgiven. Hear me. Some of your biggest work is just to clear space. You don't have to make it happen. You have to make it welcome. You make it welcome by clearing energetic space. You clear energetic space by forgiving, by addressing the traumas and the shame and the guilt that has plagued not just you, but your mom, her mom, and her mom. You clear energetic space from the survival context that your dad, his dad, and his dad operated from. You forgive them. Jesus said it when he was on the cross. He said, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. Ooh, let that one land. Do you think that your parents knew what they were doing? Do you think that your grandparents knew what they were doing? They were surviving. They were just trying to figure it out. But it stops here. It stops with you because you've had the second birth. You got space to watch YouTube and listen to podcasts and, if, and, to, and, and, and hear me. If you're on something like this, if you're on a video like this, it's because there's something handwritten on your soul that's begging to come out. And what you seek is seeking you always. What you want wants you. Everything on the planet wants to be imbued with love and light and expression. And, 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 and money is no different. We use the money as a tool. We use money as a tool to circulate because all of life is doing that. This video is going. It's circulating. Write, write, write the word circulate. Let's see who can spell it. I probably can, but I know it, right? And by the way, never say I'm spending money. Say I'm circulating it because to circulate something means to return to the sender. It returns to the sender. So we use money as a spiritual tool to circulate, to, to, to dance in the energy that's always occurring. I'm in my uh, our event space on our property and I have the air conditioning on and it's circulating air. My body is circulating oxygen. 
My words are circulating through the interwebs. It's all circulation. It's all movement. Many of you block the flow. You block the channel. And a body of water without an inlet or an outlet is a swamp. And swamps carry dis-ease. There's the stagnation. It's what's killing you, not money. You circulate money as a spiritual tool. The next time you spend money by circulating it to the coffee shop, do it with joy on your heart. The next, you, next time you pay your electric bill, do it, do it from praise. The next time you, 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 you pay for, for, to get on a train or a bus or to put gas in your car, do it from the space of like, ah, I'm participating in the grand dance and the universal flow. I'm being with God. I'm not going up river, I'm going downstream. I'm with the flow, the circulation. That's why we call money currency because it flows through the current and returns back to the sender. Sometimes exactly, but many times through some unforeseen space that you didn't know it would come from. So money and God mix, here's why. Because the richer you are, the less you're thinking about trying to pay bills and survive. And when you're not in survival, you are in, you are regulated. Your nervous system is regulated. You're grounded. And after you drive the cars and do the cool stuff, you know what's gonna happen? You're just going, well, who can I bless? Who can I give to? Who can I support? What creativity can I create? What art can I bring forward? What part of this guitar can I play in such a way that it opens someone's heart and soul? What technology or gadget can I invent that will change the world? Like it's literally, that's what happens when we're tuned in and we understand that there's no separation between us and God. The only separation is what's happening, happening for you mentally and whether you've gotten your body on board with it. Remember, we, we, we want to clear as much energetic space. We clear it through forgiveness. We, th we clear it through joy practices, intentional joy. We clear it through addressing the traumas and the toxic shame and the things that you've held for 20, 30, 50 years. This is your work. And the more spaciousness you have in your energy body, the more spaciousness, spaciousness you have to serve humanity. Somebody asked me a question the other day. They said, how do you create consistency when it comes to your coaching business and, and, and all the stuff that you're doing? And I said, I don't have to be consistent because it's a way of life. It's just who I am. It's what I've signed up for. The question is, is can you be the same and understand that as you are lifted up, as you give your gifts, right? The Gnostic Gospels of Thomas said, if you bring forth what is within you, what you bring forth will save you. But if you do not bring forth what is within you, what you do not bring forth will destroy you. Let that land. As you bring forth the gifts, a talents, abilities, the ideas, the love, the kisses, the joy, the hugs, as you bring forth, as you bring it forth, it'll save you. It'll lift you. And from that lifted place, that vibrational space, people are attracted like, like moths to a flame. The light the light, the light. But if you stagnate, if you hold, if you hoard, if you don't bring it forward, you know what happens? You, you, you become like a, a cancer cell. And then other cancer cells are attracted to that thing. Not because you're bad or wrong or inherently something is wrong with you. It's, it is your choice. Just like electricity. God is like electricity. It just says yes. It always says yes. You want to do that? You want to operate and lack? You want to, you want to speak? play in, in the victim space? Got it. I don't speak English. I speak frequency. And so if you are going to offer that frequency, you're going to get more of that frequency. If this is resonating, just say, I feel you, P. Tell me what's landing. Tell me what's alive. Tell me what you're hearing in the comments below right now. If you're listening to this on a podcast, just go on the social media when you get a chance and just share your biggest takeaways and tag me in. I love you all. I appreciate you all. I got a book called Spiritual Millionaire. If you want this stuff written down succinctly in a way in which you can continue to reference it, buy that book. The link is in the, in the show notes. It's in the, uh, it's in the bio. It's everywhere. I love you all. PrestonSmiles.com forward slash book. I love you all. I appreciate you all. If I never see you, if you don't subscribe, if, I, if you never come back, I love you. I see you. Thank you for your time, your attention, and your energy. God and money go together just like you and I go together because birds of a feather often flock together. So I see you.
I see what you did. I see what you're doing. I see where you're going. You've stepped up. You've stepped in. You've said yes to your calling. And now you're going through the motions. Ooh, energy and motion to realizing outwardly what you've started to tune into inwardly. So don't let up. Don't give up. Give in. Give out. Pour forth from your truth and you will never be stopped.